This is Megan. Hi, Megan. I'm Katie. It's nice to meet you, Katie. Do you want to hang out? I was excited to see this anyway because I love a killer doll horror. But especially because we were getting another Gerard Johnston uh, movie because Housebound is genuinely one of my favourite films. Like, love it awesome. so much. Awesome, um, awesome. And like, this, like Housebound, Megan also handles tone. Like, there's comedy and there's horror. Um, is it tricky to find the balance of, like, how much you can push one one way uh, while you're making this film? Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, it's something that you really have to constantly be monitoring. Um, yeah. But the good thing is if you cast it right... Like if you cast someone, someone like Allison and and Ronnie as well, and and Brian, they all kind of get it. Like they all kind of get where the line is. So that kind of makes my job a lot easier. But definitely in in the edit, you you're always thinking, right? What have we? Maybe when you switch from comedy and horror to drama, it's often the hardest things. It's like you want the film to have heart, and it's like, okay, you know you don't want you yeah that's the hardest part because it's like well we've been absurd here we can't be too earnest here because then it'll be all over the place so that's i think that's the hardest thing to get right is it always a bit of a worry when you're going into a subgenre where you know there's like already a classic of the genre in say child's play with this one for megan is it a worry when you're doing that or is it actually quite fun to subvert what an audience will expect from this kind of film yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, obviously we didn't know that um, Child's Play was going to get a remake when we were developing this. So that was definitely a factor. It's like, oh, okay, shit. And he's also got AI. Okay, shit. Okay, so what do we what do we do now? But uh, our allegory was so much more about um, parenting in the 21st century, you know, and I see Megan as a, as a co-parent more than a friend. So yeah. I felt like the theme of the movie was really strong. Um, so that was kind of our North Star, just like we knew we had something to say. And I, myself, as a, as a new dad, I just really had a uh, kind of, yeah, I just, I, I just felt like I really wanted to get this off my chest a bit about the struggles I was having as a parent. And so, mm. so that was really the, gu the guiding light. It marked your return to Blumhouse for the first time since uh, Get Out. Um, yes. What particular lesson did you necessarily learn on those films that you brought to Megan? Because there's a different way of approaching a horror genre or like the balance of laughs and scares like Megan has. Totally. I mean, what a masterclass, first of all. Jordan is so talented at working in this genre. So I got firsthand, I got this experience of what horror can be and can do. I grew up being just like primarily terrified by scary movies. I'm not one of those people who can watch it and then like go on with my day and sleep normally at night. Like they really bother me in a good way. So I was almost too scared to watch the movies that really play with genre. But with Get Out, I had this experience of being in a theater full of people many times while we were promoting the movie and just hearing laughter, applause, like people talking to the screen. And I just thought, well, this is such a fun, this is why you go to the movie. This is such a fun experience to have. And so when it came to Megan, immediately when you're in the realm of a doll and you're in a horror thriller genre, you know there's gonna be mixing of things and you know that those moments of humor are gonna be really important, those moments of fun and of like, you know, uh, levity. And so I think I was better prepared going into this one, especially from an EP standpoint, to understand what, what target we were trying to hit. But I give Gerard a ton of credit for getting us there, getting it from the performances and even just from the editing and mixing it all together um, with Akilah's script to get us to a point where last night at the premiere, people were clapping when Megan did e very evil things, laughing out loud, like cheering. It was a blast. It's so fun to see in a big theater. Yeah, and as you were saying, you are executive producer on this as well. So I was wondering just how much of, um, in the creative process, like, any notable changes you made or you wanted to bring? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, it was such a pleasure to be officially very involved in the movie from the beginning. I, I like to be that involved anyway, but this time I had a credit that meant I was allowed to be, like no one could deny me draft script, et cetera. Um, it was, it was the best. I, I'd like to think I made, I mean, you'd have to ask them. I, I think I contributed a lot throughout. Um, I sort of see it as like a three-stage process of the prep, the filming, and then the post. And I think at each stage of the way, there's room for a lot of input and a lot of perspective. I did a lot of research about tech and AI and what kind of person Gemma would be. I really wanted her to feel real. I, and it's a, hard, it's a really hard part to play, actually, because um, 
she can she risks being the villain immediately and yet we are hoping that audiences will feel they're begging for her to do a better job but they can feel that she wants to do the right thing but she just doesn't have the tools um and so we we know katie's better off with her because she's a human being but for a while we are supposed to think that maybe megan actually is a better idea certainly a more fun one um but so getting Gemma to feel real three-dimensional was I think the biggest challenge and, and understanding the emotional stakes of the movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely loved it. I feel like, you know, it's gonna, it will be hard for me now to be in a movie where I'm not also producing because I, I just love all the details. I, I find it all fascinating and wonderful. And you were talking about not the reaction at the premiere last night, but I don't actually think any film trailer this year has had as big of a social reaction as Megan's first trailer with obviously the dancing, but Megan herself, like, did you ever expect it to go as mad as it? Because it is quite, no one knew about this film before that trailer came no, out. No, like, I mean, actually she- actually went mad. We think she's iconic. We think she's a star. Obviously. She's gorgeous. She's funny. Um, the biggest challenge and like our mission with the trailer, with all the marketing, was just to make sure people like understood who she is. Do they get her? And the minute the trailer came out and we started seeing the memes on social media, we were like, oh, they get her. Like we did yeah. it. They understand who she is and they are running with it. And they're all right. Like people just somehow, it was as if she had just already been in the culture, even though no one knew it was coming. Um, it was like, you dream of something like that where it just takes Twitter and TikTok by storm in the way that it did. Um, and I hope people are really excited to go see it because it's, seeing it all, all of those little moments in the trailer that got such a big reaction, seeing it in its context is even better, so. Yeah. No, I really thought someone would probably talk me down from the ledge well before we got to shooting, but um, everyone seemed to embrace it. And, you know, when the film, I remember when the film was finished, one of my, the first bits of feedback I got from the studio was just how much Universal really loved the dancing. So, you, you know, I, I had already had an idea that this was something that people were, uh, gonna get it excited about, but I had no idea that it would do what it did when it when it came out. It was really fun. And I saw obviously you had all the like dancing uh, Megans at the premiere last night, which uh, looked really cool. Part yeah, like Jason Bloom looks very it disturbing. Scary. It was scary when I went to use the bathroom at the after party, and this line of them came out like kind of like <laughs> pretty little impa limpers all in a row, just coming out while I was trying to use the bathroom. It was it was surreal. <laughs> Um, although I do wonder when it comes to something like that, we hear sometimes that trailers obviously are put together by different departments and don't always have the say. Is it the kind of thing you'd have wanted to keep secret from people or were you always quite keen to get it no, out? No, I wanted it to be secret. Film? Yeah, I was really worried when yeah. I saw the trailer and saw how much dancing there was. I was like, oh my God, you, you're giving it away and, and you've got to... I did want it to be a surprise. I wanted it to be a really fun surprise. And I've... I mean, luckily we have test screenings, so I've been able to sit in a room and kind of see people genuinely react for the first time not knowing what they're going to see. So I was a little bit bummed out, but you've got to market the movie. And and it was fun to see that it was able to be recut and embraced. But, you know, in terms of the trailer and things like that, I really just have to trust Universal. And when you're making the movie, you're it's exhausting being over every single decision. So it's quite nice yeah. to just sit back and say, OK, well, you guys do what you, you can. They've, they've, I know that there's more to the movie that people haven't seen yet. So I, I feel okay about it. There's more to the movie and there's more to that scene as well. So it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's still something there. Um, yeah. What are you exactly, uh, just finally, what are you hoping the audiences get from this uh, when it comes out in cinemas next year? I hope they have a, a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, I just I just really just hope they have a blast. It's all That's all I want. And if they also take away the message that, yeah, God, we are we are relying on devices too much. That would be amazing. I mean, my wife and I are constantly having these conversations in our kitchen about raising our kids in this time and just how stressful it is and how it sucks that they can't have the same upbringing that we can, how they can't be sheltered from that. And if this kind of promotes a little bit more of a conversation about that, that would be awesome.